Hello everybody out there in the book verse, it's Stephanie and today I am back with my May TBR. This one is actually May. I know in my last one I kept saying like May or March or something um, when it was April, but this one is actually my May TBR and I am really excited for it. May is going to be a pretty open month for me. I'm going to have a little bit more time for reading, so I'm really excited about that. And so I'm hoping to, like, I still want the game to be nice to me. I don't need, like, 30 books on my TBR by any means, but I could take more than four and not panic. I'll just put it that way. So let's go ahead and look at how I did for the month of April. April was so nice to me. I only had four books. I only own three of them, but I had Sandman for a graphic novel, which I did read. I know you all have been waiting for me to because it has been on maybe like six TBRs now. It's been a little bit ridiculous, but I did read it. That one is done. I also had The Blood Gift, uh, which was for a sci-fi, and I did read that as well. I had The Devil in the White City for a book club, and I read that one. And I have The Bone Shard Emperor, which was for a book book with a weapon on the cover and I have started that when I'm in the middle of that one. I should be finishing it probably tomorrow. I like to read it really close to the live shows so it's fresh in my mind but that means I have one for the month of April. I don't think anyone is surprised. I think everyone was anticipating me to read this month or to win this month to read all of the books this month so this really doesn't come as a shock to anyone I'm guessing uh, but I am still very excited about it because it means I do not get a new black hole on the board. I did actually earlier this month play the game again for my friend Abby and she had to put another black hole on so I actually feel really good that she had it a little bit harder than me because that never happens. <laughs> So we can just go ahead and jump into the first roll. Don't have to put a black hole on the board. Don't have to do anything with it. And I'm just excited to see what happens this month. I'm not really feeling any type of way about it. I am just okay with whatever the board decides to do. Okay, look at the beautiful empty board. I am so excited. I don't have to add an extra black hole. There's not even one to take away. This is gonna be a good month. Let's jump into the first roll. Here we go. Nine, good start. Ooh, a sun. I'm, ooh, I'm not happy about that. Let's see what we get. The final book in a series. I can make that work. I'm in the middle of a lot of series. For the first prompt, we got a sun, and the prompt for that one was final book in a series and I don't think anyone's going to be surprised by it but I decided to go with The Bone Shard War by Andrea Stewart. This is the third and final book in her Drown Empire trilogy and I have read the first two while well, I'm in the middle of the second one and this is the third and final one. I've been buddy reading these with my friend Joanna from the channel Joanna Sousa and I'm just really excited to see how this ends. I love the colors of these books. They're so bright and vibrant and I really like that under the dust jacket it is the same color as well which I think is really cool. This is an adult high fantasy series. It's set on an archipelago and the emperor is not really maintaining the way that he should. Things are starting to fall apart and bad things are happening and we are following the princess who is trying to earn her place on the throne and save her empire. The, the A smuggler uh, who has the most adorable animal companion, love him, and a person on an island who picks mangoes, and then also this girl who is the daughter of a governor. Um, that's kind of how the first one is set up, and it definitely expands. There's interesting magic in here, so I'm really excited to see how this finishes out. I've heard both bad and good things about this book, so I'm really hoping I like it. Okay, second roll, starting off good. Six. I think that's safe. Four, five, six. Barely safe. Okay, what do we get? Something good? Booktuber fave. Okay, we can do that. Next prompt, we got a star, and for that, it needs to be a booktuber 
fave and I decided to go with the Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. This one is one that um, Andrew from the channel Andrew's Wizard Lee Reads really enjoys and we are actually going to be buddy reading this one this month. He is rereading the first one in anticipation for the second one which has already come out. So this I actually really don't know a whole ton about it. It is an adult high fantasy. I'm pretty sure it has that very classical fantasy feel to it. I think it has like um, travels, quests, magic, maybe chosen one in here. I am not positive. There is a heist in here as well. So I'm just really excited for it. I honestly was invested in this book to begin with because I love the cover. I think it's absolutely stunning. And the Broken Binding actually made special editions of this series, which I got because I just think this is such a beautiful series. And they only had them in paperback. Um, so I was able to get the hardbacks and the special editions, which I'm really, really excited about. But I am definitely looking forward to reading this book. It is kind of chunky. So I have started off with two quite thick books. So I mean, I do have a lot of time to read, but I can't put all thick books on there if it's going to be super long. So maybe I need to cut back a little bit on that. But I'm really looking forward to this. And I'm hoping that um, Andrew and I have some good discussion about it. I think it should be a lot of fun. I've been definitely looking forward to this one for a while. Third roll so far. So good. I think we're in a pretty good spot to not hit a black hole too, or a wormhole. Five. Okay. Not big, but not bad. Five. Ooh, another star. I'm liking this game. Our prompt is a standalone. Okay, doable. Okay, next one we got another star, which I'm very happy about, and the prompt is standalone. And for this one, I'm going to go a direction that a lot of you probably aren't expecting, and I'm going to be reading Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. I have absolutely no idea what this is about. I know that this is a classic book. I know that Kurt Vonnegut is a very classic author. A lot of people really love him, and so I'm really interested to see what happens with this one. I think he might write kind of like dystopian apocalyptic type books, but but let me read the back. Yes, an apocalyptic tale of this planet's ultimate fate. So I'm just kind of interested to see what this is all about, see if I enjoy it. I think I'm going to be putting a little bit of um, classics and more literary fiction on this TBR, so we'll see how this goes. I have no idea if I'm even going to enjoy this, but we'll see. Okay, I'm starting to get a little nervous with how well things are going. Five. Again, I, I think that's good. Ooh, moderately good. We got another sun. And the prompt for that is a book with 10 to 12 letter title. Sometimes this is really hard. Okay, we got another sun, which is fine. I can deal with it. But the prompt is 10 to 12 letter title. And for this one, it's going to be another book that's definitely out of my normal genre. And I'm going with Normal People by Sally Rooney. So we have 12 letters in the title. I have no idea what this book is about. I'm pretty sure this has like some mental health um, aspects to it. And this is literary fiction. I know that Sally Rooney is extremely beloved. People really enjoy her books. So I am hoping I will really like it as well. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be quite a fast read. I feel like literary fiction and romance tend to be extremely quick reads for me. So I don't think this one is going to take up too much time. So adding it to the TBR, not really a big deal. Along with my super thick books, this one should be a really fast one. Okay, for safety, we don't want a three or a 10. No threes, no tens, we're happy. Come on, good numbers. Five, again. What is happening here? A moon this time. Okay, we've gotten all of the different ones. A book that ends in an odd page number. Doable. Okay, moving right along. And the next prompt, a moon, is a book that ends in an odd page number. And for this, I'm putting on a classic that I actually am really excited to read. I think this is going to be one that I really enjoy. There have been a lot of people telling me that this is a classic that would really fit with like my vibes that I like. And that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And it ends on page just a second. Give me a second. 
461. So it is an odd page number. Now, I am not 100% positive the actual storyline of this book, but I'm pretty sure that a girl falls in love or has like this love affair with a man who is kind of her employer of some kind. I'm not 100% positive on that, but I hear it has very like gothic feel to it. It's a little bit of like a thriller mystery kind of thing. Um, so I'm kind of hoping for something along the same lines as Rebecca because I absolutely loved that book. It was so good. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for with this one. I'm really excited to read it. I've heard great things about it. So yes, this is a classic, but this is one that I'm really looking for to and I think I'm gonna love. Okay now yeah we don't want another five. We cannot keep this streak of fives going so fingers crossed that does not happen. Okay here we go. Five! Oh my! No! Was that three fives and no it was Everything was going so well. Maybe I counted wrong. No. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, seriously. What are the odds? Oh, such bad luck. Okay, well, we are starting over, my people. Let's let's see how it goes from here. Wow. It has been so nice to me. I guess I had this coming. Okay, well, that was not ideal. I actually was quite surprised. I feel like I'm always anticipating hitting it, but I was just on a roll and feeling good about it, and I did not see that coming. But like I said, it's okay. I have a little bit more reading time in May, so this isn't the worst. We will grab our wormhole jar and we will pull out what series we're gonna continue. Uh, I don't know if I've updated it. I hope so, because there are some series that I've just recently started that I would like to pull out, but I'm just not positive. I don't want to pull out Wheel of Time. I know it's terrible. I feel like this jar is going to be the only thing that gets me to read Wheel of Time, but I just, I really don't want to pull it out. It's so long. I don't really want to pull out any of the long ones, but we'll see what we get. Let's go ahead and grab out a piece. Okay, got one, got it. It's like stuck up there in my hand, okay. Ooh, be nice to me, be nice to me. Oops, it's going the wrong way. What? What is it? Malice? Oh, it is, Malice, okay. I am not gonna lie to you, I kind of forgot about this series a little bit. Let me go grab it. Okay, so the first book in the series was actually called Malice, and the second one is called Misrule. This is just a duology, so I'm not super sad about that. This is going to be finishing out a series, which I desperately need to do. If you have watched my series video, you understand. And it's not super long. It's not super short either. Let's see how many pages it is. It's 469 pages. So that is not terrible. I'm okay with it. This isn't one that I would have planned on putting on my TBR by any means, but I am okay that this one was chosen. I think it's going to be a fast read. It is a fantasy romance. It's a sin uh, Sleeping Beauty retelling, and it's kind of told from the perspective of the Maleficent character, who in this series is called Alice or Malice. And the ending of the last book was not expected. I thought it was very interesting, so I am intrigued to see where we go with this one. But yeah, this one is going on. The wormhole jar has chosen. It has spoken. We're going to be reading this. I think it'll be good. I think this will be a fast read and I think I'll enjoy it. So not mad about it, but we are starting over from the beginning, which is a little nerve wracking, but you know what? Like I said, it's okay. This is the month to do it. Okay, here we go with essentially roll number one. Woohoo. Eight. I actually think that is bad. Something in my brain is telling me this is not good. Okay. Yup, yup, mm-hmm. Okay, well, we just might as well not have even rolled there. We're just right back at the beginning. Thank you. I mean, it, we were already very close to the beginning, so it wasn't the end of the world, but really, like, 
Do I not get to pick my own books? I didn't even put the lid back on. Maybe that was why. Maybe I jinxed myself by not putting the lid back on the wormhole jar. That could be it. This time I will put the lid back on and see if it changes things. <laughs> okay, so I am hoping for a graphic novel. There's Sandman's actually the only graphic novel series that I would hope would come out. So I don't know about that. It's kind of loud outside. Sorry, I feel like they're doing construction. So I am so sorry if it's loud for you guys. But let's go ahead. Let's pick one out. Got it. Sorry, my nose itched. But I don't want you to think I'm cheating. So I'm not going to edit that out. <laughs> okay. What do we get? We were children. I am not mad about that one. This is a good pick. I'm actually pretty excited about this. Okay, I actually don't own the next book in the We Were Children series, uh, so I will put it up here, but I did look it up and it is called Lost in the Moment and Found. This is the most recent release and it's the only one that I haven't read in that series, which I probably didn't remove it when I finished that series because I don't really edit that jar as much as I should. Um, but luckily a new book has come out since I finished the most recent release and I do not know which uh, character this one is going to be following but I am really looking forward to it. This is a novella series that follows children who have gone through portals into different worlds, come back to our world and have had some struggles adjusting to it. And it's very nonsensical, whimsical, it tackles a lot of different societal issues actually in it. Um, and so I've really been enjoying it a lot. I like that they're novellas, they're short, and I've had a lot of fun with um, most of them. Some I like better than others, but I'm really looking forward to this. Plus I love the covers of this series. They're so beautiful. And now here we are back at the beginning again. I feel like this is, this is the third time we've been starting at this point. <laughs> and um, I'm just really hoping that, that it goes well. I'm just really kind of hoping that maybe we don't hit any more wormholes. We can hit a bunch of other places, but I'd like to pick my own books <laughs> instead of relying on the jar to pick them for me. So fingers crossed that is the last of the wormholes. Okay, here's essentially our third first roll. Love this for us. Nine. Yes. Ah, oh, another sun. Okay. Nine, and we get a sun prompt. Let's see, a classic. Fine, I can deal with that. Classic it is. Okay, after I've already put like two classics on there, we got a sun and a classic prompt. And for this one, I'm gonna go with Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This is the same author as Cat's Cradle, which I did pick before. And I am pretty sure that this book focuses on like the terribleness that is war and so I'm really interested to see I heard, this book always makes me think of this girl from work who's like guy she was dating said this was her favorite book and she went to, with him to like get it from a used bookstore so she could read it as well and the owner and this guy just bashed her for not having read Slaughterhouse Five, like it was some sort of a crime. And then she read part of it and hated it and so didn't finish it. So I'm hoping I enjoy it. I really wanna kind of know more about like these classics and the inspiration that they had on other books. So looking forward to this, um, no idea what I'm gonna think, but hoping I like it. Come on, be nice to me. <laughs> Six, oh, I think it's good. Oh, I hope it's good. Five, six, barely. Holy cow. Wait, I swear that just happened. It's like deja vu. Okay, our prompt is friend pick. Okay, I got this one. Friend pick. Okay, for the next prompt, we got a star and the prompt is friend pick. And I am actually so excited that this one came up because I... Every once in a while, I will ask someone to kind of be on standby in case I get this prompt, but I've never gotten this prompt when I've actually had someone on standby ready for it. So I have my friend Angela, like ready to pick me a book and I will go ahead and send her a text and I will come back and film the clip letting you know which book she picked after she gets back to me because I'm not quite sure how long that'll be. 
Okay, Angela texted me back. She was actually pretty quick. And the book she chose, I am really excited about. It is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Tachni. Tachshi? Tachshki? I can't say that apparently. Um, and I think this is going to be a great book. I've heard that the writing is beautiful and it's just a gorgeous experience to read this book. I don't have any idea what it's about, but that in itself is enough for me. I love beautifully written books like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, Strange the Dreamer, those types of things. I'm hoping to get kind of that feel of just being immersed in the story and in the writing. And the book itself is a special edition that I got from Fairy Loot. It is gorgeous. Look at those sprayed edges. They're stunning. I'll show you under the dust jacket as well because I might as well, but oh isn't it so pretty like it's so pretty and it has artwork Ooh, actually has a signed book plate but it has like artwork i am just so excited for this i think this is going to be such a good read and thank you so much angela for picking this one this is perfect and it's not too long which also is great because my stack's getting a little bit thick um i don't have too many really big books but it's getting a little long and I'm starting to get a little worried. So this one fits perfectly and I'm so excited. Okay. Nice, good vibes, all good things. Four. That was a terrible roll, but four it is. Okay. And another sun. I do not remember the last time I got this many suns. Okay, a book that has an epilogue. I, I think that is very doable. Okay, we got another sun. How are we getting so many sun prompts? But this one is a book that has an epilogue. And I actually kind of struggled this one with this one a little bit. I was looking through some books and trying to decide and I just couldn't find anything that was relatively short that I was kind of interested in that I could throw on here. Uh, but then I decided I was going to go with The Frugal Wizard's Guide to Surviving Medieval... London? Oh my gosh, I could be wrong on that title. The Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England. I was close. <laughs> I was close, but uh, this is the most recent release by Brandon Sanderson. That was one of his four secret books that he wrote during COVID and is releasing as part of the Kickstarter. I do have the Kindle and the audiobook of this. I don't have the physical one yet. Nobody does. Um, they're a little bit behind on like their publishing of them, printing, sending them out, which honestly, I'm not really that mad about. I'm okay with it. We have what we need to be able to read it. And I absolutely loved the cover of Tress of the Emerald Sea that we got as part of this Kickstarter. So I think it's worth it to be able to get these really high quality, gorgeous books. So I'm not that, I'm not really that fussed about it. But this is the one I'm going to be choosing. I really don't know a whole ton about it. I'm guessing it's going to be a wizard in medieval England. And I'm think that Brandon Sanderson said that he did put a lot of time into researching this era and trying to make it really good. I haven't actually heard anybody talk about it because I have been avoiding spoilers. I don't really want other people's opinions before I go into it because I know that this might not be everyone's favorite of his because I think it's a little bit of a different style than he's used to writing it or people are used to reading from him. So I want to go in fresh with no opinions, no biases. This is going on the list. How long is it? I'm a little nervous that I'm putting a little bit too long of books on here, but Goodreads says it's 372 pages. So that shouldn't be too horrible. I mean, it's not short by any means, but I think it'll be okay. I think it's good. I think it's a decent pick. And I mean, I had to have a book that had an epilogue, so I didn't have as many choices as I would like. But fingers crossed the rest of the game's nice to me because it's, it's not long, but it's not short. Well, it's okay. No more black holes, no more wormholes, and we'll be fine. Okay, come on. Give me a big number. 11. Yes. Thank you. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11. I know, I, I know I'm past it by two, but I still got a little worried. Okay, let's see. What is the prompt? A book by a female author. Very doable. I have a lot of those. 
For the next moon prompt, it is a female author, and for this I went with Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. This is another Sally Rooney book I'm putting on here. I have doubled up on a couple authors on this just because I kind of want to branch out a little bit. And this again is literary fiction. This one I believe has to do with these two best friends and their kind of relationships and how it affects their friendship. Um, I'm not 100% positive on it. I am really interested to see if I like it or not. And I think it'll be a fast read. Like I said, literary fiction tends to be very quick for me to read. It's super easy. It doesn't take a whole ton of brain power. So I am really um, hoping this will be a fast read. And how long is it? Oh, it's just around 300 pages. So definitely doable. And I'm hoping I like it. I, I mean, I have two Sally Rooney books on here, so I am hoping I enjoy her writing style. Okay. Five. Ooh, wait. <laughs> We've been in this spot before. We've literally been here. No fives. That's what we don't want. Anything but a five? Anything but a five? Come on. Ooh, I am so nervous. Ah, I just don't want to roll them. Okay, we got this. No fives. Three. Seriously. Okay, fine. It's not a five. One, two, Another sun. What is happening? Okay, a book that is now is an adaptation will be an adaptation. There's a lot more to choose from than there used to. We can do this. I can't believe we only went three spaces. That's just painful. And on top of it, we got another sun. If we have to go back to the beginning again, I would run out of sun prompts, I'm pretty sure. But the prompt was adaptation. And for this one, I'm being very nice to myself. And I have chose Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. This one obviously has been adapted adapted into a movie. It's very short. This is a children's book about a little girl who raises this baby pig and then the spider tries to save the pig's life so he isn't killed and eaten for Christmas dinner. And I know that I have read it when I was like six, I think. So really, really long time ago. So I don't really remember it. I do remember the story very clearly uh, from the adaptation but I don't remember if it's 100% true to the book or not. So I am excited to read this. I think it'll be fun. Plus it should be extremely short. Very easy to read, very short, which I need at the moment. Okay, anything but a two. Literally, I will take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, but not two. Yes, it's a four. Oh, I'm so happy. Yes, Whew, that felt exhausting. I am actually tired after this game. Let's hope the spinner wheel at least is a little bit nice to me. Okay, we finally made it to the end. I have a lot of books on this TBR, but I'm still feeling okay about it. Honestly, I feel like I'm still in a good spot. I have very high expectations for May, apparently. But let's go ahead and see what prompt we get. So now I will spin a spinner wheel. It'll give me a prompt. I have 10 seconds to find a book that fits the prompt or I have to spin again. Or if I get the same prompt as I got last month, I have to spin again as well. Last month's prompt was book club. So let's see what we get. I'm honestly not fussed on what prompt I get. I would like to not get book club just because I don't wanna have to spin again, but if I have to, not really mad about it. Okay, here we go. Free pick, okay. Oh gosh, I just dropped my phone. Um, where is my books I brought? Okay. Yes, Ugh! I'm running out of time, this one. Oh, I wasn't even running out of time. I should have picked a shorter book. I should also pick up my phone. For those of you who don't know, a lot of times I'll bring up kind of a stack of potential options for the spinner wheel and for my game pick. So they're, they're usually sitting over there. That's why I tend to run that direction. Not always, but a lot of times. Um, and this one was apparently the one I grabbed. 
I don't, I feel like I'm regretting my decision, but now I'm in it and so I'm stuck. This is the second to last book in the Throne of Glass series, which I have been reading. And in all reality, it is a series that I want to continue and I want to finish within the next couple months. So I do want to read it. It's what I want to read, but having it on my essential TBR being this long, I don't know if that was my best choice. Uh, let's see, how long is it? 693 pages. Whew, it's fine. I got this. I have time in May. I just have to keep telling myself that. I am still really excited to finish this one. This is a YA high fantasy series. It follows this assassin and the world definitely expands a lot. It has fae, it has shapeshifters, it has magic, it has witches and wyverns and it's really a very interesting world. It's a lot of fun and I've been enjoying my time reading it. So I am excited that's on here. Plus I will be doing the TBR mini star hop readathon with my Patreons this next, not this weekend, but the coming weekend. And I almost always have a Throne of Glass book on that readathon. So I guess it's a good thing it's on here and hopefully I'll be able to <laughs> read it during that readathon and knock it out. But yeah, this is the final book on this TBR. I'm looking over at it. It's a little thick. It's a little thick. Yeah. Mm. Let me just show you. Okay. <gasps> here are the books I have. Um, shockingly, there's only one book that I don't own, and that is the Frugal Wizard's Handbook to Surviving Medieval England, which was for a book with an epilogue. Uh, Jane Eyre, which was for a book that ends in an odd page number. Cat's Cradle, which was for, oh my gosh, what was that one for? A Standalone. The Ember Blade, which was a booktuber fave. The Last Tale of the Flower Bride, which was for a friend pick. Uh, Empire of Storms, which was for a spin a wheel free pick. Charlotte's Web, which was for an adaptation. Conversations with Friends, which was for a book written by a female author. Slaughterhouse Five, which was for a classic, I believe. Mist Rule, which was for a spinner wheel. Uh, or no, for a wormhole, sorry, for a wormhole pick. Normal People, which is for a book with 10 to 12 letter title, The Bone Shard War, which was for a final book in a series, and I also forgot the the Lost and Found book. Oh, what is it called? The next Waver Children's book, which is for a wormhole pick as well, or a black hole. One of the two. So I have one, two, 13 books on this TBR, and it's it's thick. It's a stack. There, I mean, the Ember Blade is long. Empire Storms is long. The Bone Shard War is long. Miss Rule isn't short. Jane Eyre isn't short. The Brandon Sanderson book isn't short. This is going to be an intense month. I need to really get reading. I need to knock out some of these books quickly because I have a lot to read. But it's going to be fine. I'm really excited about it. I think May is going to be a great reading month and I'm not even that mad about it even though my arm is dying. Oh and there goes Jane Eyre. Good thing it was a book that I just found downstairs for free. <sighs> okay that is my TBR for the month of May. It's long. It's a, it's a pretty long TBR. There are some thick books on there but I'm excited. I think I'm actually going to be able to do it this month. I have the time. As long as I'm really feeling in a reading mode, this shouldn't be a problem. I should definitely be able to do this. And it's a good month for the board to be mean to me instead of another month when I'm super busy. So I will take it. I, I'm not going to be mad about it. We're going to be zen. So... <laughs> Let me know down in the comments what you're planning to read for this month. If you follow along with my game, I'm sorry. And also take a guess. Do you think I'm going to be able to finish all of these books? I'm feeling very confident about it, but sometimes y'all are a little more realistic about my abilities. So let me know if you think this is a doable TBR for me for the month of May. And as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you'll be notified when I post new content. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.